Hello, today I'm looking at a uh, TechLock uh, water heater controller. Uh, these are similar to uh, what I make and uh, it's a little bit of a different design. Uh, this was sent to me uh, by someone who had hit by lightning and I'm not sure who they contacted but they said they couldn't get it fixed by the company. So I'm looking at it and uh, I'm going to dissect it a little bit. As you can see, it's flashing. Uh, what I've done is remove a lot of the damage components and I'm powering the micro with five volts uh, to see if it was still alive because if the micro's dead, uh, doesn't matter about all the other stuff. I don't know if they'll supply a replacement chip. But uh, let's look at the schematic here. You have uh, three connections on it, your minus PV, plus PV, and the load. The water heater uh, element would go from the positive to the load. And this is an IGBT. It's a 10N120 uh, FL3. It's in position M2. You also have a, a, an M1 option uh, where you can put another one in parallel with it. And... Uh, Right here is a current sense resistor. This current sense resistor goes into a little amplifier and it goes into the current sense pin of the microprocessor. The microprocessor is a 16F690. Uh, you have a little option header uh, for programming the thing and uh, not much to worry about that. Uh, one interesting thing is pin 10 uh, it does have a data output. It seems to be outputting some kind of signal so you can get some internal data of what's happening with the microprocessor as it's running. But uh, standard stuff here, you come in with your positive, you have a MOV here, and then a 10 amp reverse voltage diode to protect everything. Uh, you go through a voltage dropping resistor, a 470K, down to a 10K, and this gives a voltage of around you know, two and a half to five volts for the microprocessor to look at. So you have the voltage and you got the current and uh, you can multiply those two together and uh, search around and get your PowerPoint. Uh, this is a little different than mine. Uh, I calculate what the PowerPoint voltage is and just use that. And it's a, that sets a minimum voltage that the panels will be at. There are many different ways to do PowerPoint. They all have their advantages and disadvantages. But, uh, you know, this actually does uh, calculate PowerPoint, so they're not lying about that. Uh, I didn't show it here, but on the uh, input, there's a capacitor bank. They use 300 microfarad, three 100 microfarad capacitors, so you got 300 microfarads total, and uh, I use around, uh, you know, I suggest 6,000 or more. I operate at a, more, a much lower frequency. From what I've been able to determine, uh, this has a uh, 63 microsecond cycle rate, that's around 16 kilohertz, and their minimum off time is 1.6 microseconds. That seems a little short. I'll have to try that in some future experiments. Uh, so this is only part one. But here's what happened. It appears, if this is my best guess, is that this Q2 transistor uh, shorted out with the lightning. And uh, that turned this one on. It shorted all these out. It shorted out the uh, 78L05, which provides the 5 volts. So this provides your, uh, basically, 12 to 14 volts for your drive. This is a, a power Darlington. Uh, so these two transistors will have a voltage drop. So whatever is here, just think of it as uh, you got 15.6 volts in centers and uh, 1.5 volts for the uh, voltage drop of the Darlington. And uh, you'll come out with around 14 volts. You know, I call it 12 volts just for easy things. So uh, it's kind of interesting, uh, uh, the microprocessor outputs with a negative logic, 
So when this is low, the output is driven on. Uh, I typically don't like to do that because when I'm programming, I like to turn all the outputs off starting and uh, if this microprocessor should ever uh, stop running or whatever, it basically would turn your output on all the time. But it doesn't make much matter. Um, it's a standard uh, driver using a PNP NPN to uh, drive the gate of the IGBT, 33 ohms. So that's about it. Uh, this suffered really, I mean, this is a massive hit. All these things in yellow are went bad. I mean, the only thing that stole there was basically the microprocessor. And uh, let me show you that. So here, we got the microprocessor powered up. You can see the LED flashing. And I don't think the flashing send, uh, say send out any different code. It's just like it flashes, it's running or not running. Uh, rate never changes. But let's look at the waveform here. So this is this is this is basically going high. Uh, this is your off pulse, and this down here is uh, on. Now, here's the problem. Uh, this you see this one. This is the uh, ground potential, so that's zero volts. Right up here is around 1.5 volts. Now this was driving a transistor. A transistor will turn on at basically uh, you know 0.65 volts or something around there. So this output was being uh, turned on all the time. Now, like I say, you can see here, it's uh, around 16 microhertz, 62.8 microseconds. And uh, just to show you it worked, you'll, you'll see it hunting for a little bit. Okay, we're powering it up. You can see the uh, duty cycle changing. It's looking around for a maximum power. It's not finding anything because I don't have anything uh, on there. But you can see that it, that it hunts for about two seconds. So this line right here is supposed to be down here. This chip has been damaged because this line should be down here at, at zero volts. Now, I could compensate for that if I put a couple diodes in series that'll do a 1.3 volt offset and that'll be enough uh, offset so that the transistor will turn off as it's supposed to but the problem is is this shows the micro has been stressed and uh, I was hit by lightning myself and my my whole system is microprocessor controlled I mean the whole house refrigerator the, the water heater pumps I got everything on the microprocessor and uh, my microprocessor died uh, a couple inputs weren't working on the A to D and uh, I went in in software because I was trying to get the system running again and moved over to some other A to D inputs and it worked for about two or three months and then you know one input after another would start dying so I could repair this but it probably wouldn't last forever. You might get six months out of it, maybe even a year. But uh, basically, that that chip has had it. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to repair this. I'm not sure what I want to do. This is only part one. So uh, as I dig more in, I'm going to instead of just repairing the board I'm moving all the functions external so that the board remains just as it is right now and I'll put on external FET and external FET driver and external power supply and uh, I'll hook it up to my system 
and we'll get some more information about how it works, how closely it tracks, uh, how efficient it is. But uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And we'll keep our fingers crossed. Uh, I don't know right now if, if any of the A to D inputs are damaged because I'm not feeding any information into those right now. So we'll see how much more doesn't work on this. But uh, thanks for watching. Wait for part two.